Yeah, thank you very much. Um, international relations, international politics, as it is today, mm -hmm. um, leans on several theories at the same time. The theory of realism, uh, um, neoliberalist theory, as importantly, integrationist theory. Mm -hmm. And the theory of integration is all encompassing, all encompassing, meaning you cannot, you cannot um, engage the world if you're not economically strong. You cannot engage the world if you're not polit if you do, if you do not have a politically projecting voice. You cannot engage the world if you do not have a strong military. That is why countries, for example, like Qatar, Qatar is it's just a small country, but you find them buying uh, 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 fighter jets. M16, building themselves militarily. I mean, a country that is landlocked, but investing in its in its uh, uh, in its defense weaponry. Why is why is the problem in Africa? Africa is the only continent which is which is more demographically um, potent than any other continent. We have more than one billion people. Africa is the only continent with. With a, with a buoyant youth. Africa is the only continent with a plethora of languages. But most importantly, Africa is the is a pool of resources. Sure. And when you put all of, yeah, when you put all of that together, you cannot understand why the continent is still at the false start. That's the big problem. And then you come to the realization that you need to decolonize the African mentality, because you can't have, you can't have everything. You can't have everything that, um, that sets you for progress. You can't have everything that sets you for power. You can't have everything that sets you on, on the biggest, on the biggest, on the global stage. Yet you are still in the antipodes of progress. You are still in you are still on the false start. So today, whether whether uh, what you call our values, what you call first, we we Africa does not exist in um, we do not exist in the void. We exist in the world. We exist in the world. We exist in the global world, mm -hmm. and the oh, we cannot access this world. We cannot access the promises of this world if we do not exploit our different resources, material resources, financial resources. And that would not be possible. All of that would not be possible if we do not build a strategy. It's a strategy. It's only strategy that opens doors to multi-dimensional power. Before, before Tata could organize the World Cup, they built stadia, they, they built businesses, they exploited their their petrol. They gave loans out to the to Western powers. When you once you keep being on the begging side, once you keep begin, being on the begging side, you are voiceless. This is a this 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 is a basic this is a, be, a basic uh, human notion. When you are on the begging side, you are dependent. The only ways to be to become independent is to tap into your own resources develop your own resources, build institutions, transform minds that will be able to talk on the global stage with a sense, with a sense of, 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 of autonomy, with a sense of independence. And that's the only way you invite people on, on, on a legitimate um, uh, sort of cooperation. Meaning, if you if you if you if you if you have to discuss resources, if you have to talk diplomacy, if you have to discuss economy, you talk with a legitimate voice. Unfortunately, that's not what that's not what we see. But like I said, the the saddest thing is that we have everything, everything, to be on top of the world. Yet, it's not the case. So it's it's quite paradoxical, very paradoxical, to see that the continent with everything is a continent with nothing.